Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of The Sky Tonight. My name is John Herman, and I am one of the planetarium educators at the Museum of Arts and Sciences. Uh, and specifically for this episode today, uh, I'm not going to be talking about the science of the stars uh, in these constellations here. And you may even notice that it looks a little different, that we're starting this episode off with the artwork uh, and the lines and the names drawn for all of the constellations that we can see off to the south direction. And the reason for that is because this episode I want to focus in specifically on mythology. So I have a story that I want to tell you all uh, that hopefully is pretty interesting uh, and you can go on and tell your friends and family uh, as we are all home right now and go out and look at the sky around 10 o'clock here. Uh, for Daytona Beach uh, for the rest of the week. I'm recording this on Easter, so for that whole week of uh, uh, April 13th there, uh, it will be you know about the same uh, sky. But the story remains the same wherever these constellations are in the sky. And so specifically, we're talking about two constellations here that, again, you can see at 10 o'clock tonight uh, directly in front of us here. And the one that stands out the most uh, is this long snake right here. Uh, now this is the constellation of Hydra. It's a very easy one to spot in the night sky, uh, most easily spotted by the head right here, by this clustering of stars. Uh, and Hydra shares its story, its mythology, with another constellation that's not too far from it, just above uh, right here, the constellation of Leo uh, the lion and again Leo is another one that is very easy to spot in the sky easiest way to do that is to spot him by the stars that make up uh, the head right here which is an asterism known as the sickle and if you don't know what an asterism in is uh, essentially it is a way of spotting a constellation uh, that is easier to find than finding the entirety of the crazy uh, constellation themselves because some of them can get pretty crazy. Uh, the most known that I guarantee everybody listening to this will know about are the Big and Little Dippers, which you can see off to the north direction in the sky, but that is a story for another day. Uh, now, Hydra and Leo here share their story, like I said, uh, with another constellation that we can see around 1 a.m. tonight and I'll probably speed up the uh, sky at the end of the video to show you that and sort of show you uh, another constellation that is uh, my favorite story in all of the night sky uh, but I'm not going to talk about that one specifically for this episode but for these two constellations here they follow uh, the story of Hercules. Now if you have seen the Disney movie, or if you are a history buff, uh, or you're really into mythology, Greek mythology specifically, uh, you'll know that Hercules was a son of Zeus, uh, who was a half-god, he was a demigod, as they're called, and he was tasked by Zeus to complete 12 labors uh, to sort of prove his worth to, uh, to Zeus. And in doing so, uh, he had to defeat 12 monsters, and the first monster uh, that he fought was a Nemean lion, uh, which is representative of Leo, and that was the first labor that Hercules had. Uh, and so if you Google images of Hercules, or you go and watch the Disney movie even, uh, you might see him with a lion's... Uh, coat draped around himself and the reasoning for that is Leo his uh, sort of personality trait was uh, that he was impenetrable to any mortal weapon and so Hercules couldn't use a sword couldn't use a, uh, a spear or even his shield or anything like that to defeat Leo and instead he had to do it with his own bare hands because uh, Hercules was a demigod and so therefore he was not entirely mortal himself. Uh, but then after that, directly after defeating Leo, 
uh, his next challenge, his next labor that he had was to fight this multiple headed creature here, uh, which is known as Hydra. Now this constellation here only has one head, uh, but the myth goes that when you cut off the head of Hydra, two more grow back in its place. So uh, Hydra was essentially uh, a exponential enemy uh, in that he started with three or four heads, I believe, and Hercules, not knowing better, uh, slashed all three of those heads off, uh, and then two more grew back in their place. And so Hydra, over time, uh, was just this mess of snake heads and all sorts of other things, uh, two by two growing back into place. Uh, but Hercules ended up defeating Hydra by cauterizing the wounds uh, from slashing the, uh, slashing the heads off. Uh, and the way that you would do that is, uh, you know, not to get too technical with it, uh, but you would heat up a wound to sort of burn it shut. Uh, it's a procedure that happens a lot of times in uh, emergency medical situations, uh, to say the least. But it's also good for defeating Hydra uh, if you happen to come across one in the night sky. Now, as I said, uh, Leo and Hydra here, both of their stories relate to Hercules. And we can see Hercules uh, peeking up here from the northeast direction uh, around 10 o'clock here but as we go later into the night here you can see that he starts to rise so we'll see uh, around when he comes to being uh, in a good spot for you to see him uh, in the southern sky as it is tonight so you'll have to look a little bit back to see him uh, this is around 2 or 3 a.m. Uh, I don't know if you would want to stay up that late, but Hercules is here, and you can see that he is battling Hydra uh, as well. Another fun fact about Hydra is that this is the longest constellation, uh, or the largest constellation, that exists in the night sky. Uh, and now, I mentioned as well that I would tell you a little bit about a constellation that is my favorite, and it's actually right next to Hercules. Uh, it's this sort of U-shaped constellation right here called Corona Borealis. Now, the story that I like from this constellation does not follow the Greek myths uh, of the name Corona Borealis, uh, but, it also, but it follows the story of the Norse mythologies of Arvindil's toe. So if you'd like to know more about that, uh, leave a comment, let us know, and I will make a video dedicated to Arvindil's toe that you can see in the sky.